All right, welcome back. So we've just got the one game tonight, so I figured, why not? Uh, let's do a a uh, career video with Blake Wheeler as he just reached a milestone the other night, and it, it's it's a significant milestone. And he's getting closer and closer to a thousand games played in his career, and he's still a player we don't talk a lot about, even though he's been pretty good. Especially as he gets older, he seems to get better. So he was drafted in 2004 by the Phoenix Coyotes, fifth overall, and didn't want to play in Phoenix. And they weren't able to reach any kind of an agreement with him. And it went on for, for a long time. And then eventually, July 1st, 2008, he's an unrestricted free agent. And he signs with the Boston Bruins. So he chose Boston, and there were other suitors as well, but he chose to go to Boston. And in his rookie year, uh, 81 games, 21 goals, 24 assists, 45 points. He finishes sixth in Calder voting. He played eight games in the playoffs, no points in the playoffs. And of course, uh, had I posted a video about his rookie season, people would have said, you know, he's not 18, right? And I would have been like, yeah, I know. And they're like, well, so that's different. It's not a technical rookie season. So, okay. Um, as you measure rookie seasons by how old they are, as if anybody comes into the league ready for that 82 game schedule. Uh, 2009, 2010, 82 games played, 18 goals, 20 assists, 38 points. So his production drops and in the playoffs, 13 games, one goal, five assists, six points. The Bruins are a deep team and Wheeler, it's, it, it was good that first year drops off a bit the second year, but the third year it degrades further. 58 games, 11 goals, 16 assists, 27 points. The Boston Bruins are in a position here where they can give him an extension. And that would be fine, but uh, that extension, uh, it, it depends on, on numbers and maybe his numbers don't agree. So they just, they, they trade him. So in his third year, he's traded to the Atlanta Thrashers. And he is one of the few, few remaining players who played with the Atlanta Thrashers. So February 18th of 2011, he was traded with Mark Stewart for Rich Peverly and Boris Volavik. Now, if you look at this, you look at this trade right now, you would say, oh, well, clearly that's a trade that's won by the Atlanta Thrashers. And yes, he had 17 points, seven goals, 10 assists in 23 games for the Atlanta Thrashers after the trade. I counter with this. Wheeler has excelled since leaving Boston. I'm not convinced he would have excelled if he'd stayed in Boston. I, I think that with Boston's depth, I mean, it's, it's not like they've been a, a mediocre team since then, right? So I think with Boston's depth, I, I think he, he could have had further struggles. I still think he would end up being traded anyways. So he goes to Atlanta, and then in the offseason, they end up getting transferred to Winnipeg. So he goes from being a thrasher to being a Jet. His first year in Winnipeg, 80 games played, 17 goals, 47 assists, 64 points. Absolutely destroys his previous career highs. And he reaches the heights that Phoenix thought he would when they drafted him fifth overall. So it took him a long time to get there. This is, what, uh, seven years out from his draft year when he finally reaches this. So again, when you're calling a guy a bust a year after he gets drafted, or two or three even, you can look foolish later. 2012-2013, uh, 48 games, 19 goals, 22 assists, 41 points. So points per game, nice steady increase for him. 2013, 2014, 82 games, 28 goals, which is a career high, 41 assists, 69 points. Again, more career highs for him. And the, the stability of his, of his production, the, the pr predictability of his production is really in part what gets him more and more ice time. 2014, 2015, 79 games played, 26 goals, 35 assists, 61 points. So that's that's three straight years now, or two straight years at that point of 20, 20 plus goals. He's had a lot of them. Plays four games in the playoffs. They got wiped out that year. He only had the one goal. Uh, they got swept that year. But there was a belief that Winnipeg was building, and this was going to be something, something special. The following year, his numbers are really good. The Winnipeg Jets fall back out of the playoffs. His numbers are very good. 82 games, 26 goals, 52 assists, which was fifth in the NHL that year. Uh, 78 points, which was sixth in the NHL that year. And so he's a top 10 guy at that stage. 
2016-2017, 82 games, 26 goals, 48 assists, which was ninth overall in the entire National Hockey League, and 74 points, which doesn't have him in the top 10, but he's not far out of the top 10. And again, you know, this is a player who has been about a point a game for, for Winnipeg. So when we have the discussion about how much ice time he gets, and and whenever I hear somebody say, well, they got Wheeler on the first, what's he doing there? Why is he on the first line? I don't know. He was in the All-Star game in 2018. That was his first All-Star game, too, and in his 30s. 81 games that year, 23 goals, 68 assists, which was first in the National Hockey League. 91 points, which was ninth. And then in the playoffs, he plays 17 games when they went to the conference finals. Three goals, 18 assists, and 21 points. And he was the second team All-Star that year. Yeah, and that wasn't that long ago. 2018-2019, he goes to the All-Star game again. 82 games played, 20 goals, 71 assists, 91 points. Another notable with him, he doesn't get hurt. A real notable with Blake Wheeler is he doesn't get hurt in a league where a lot of players struggle with staying healthy. He's able to do that. And he's not a no-hit guy either. He's not a player who, yeah, he doesn't get hurt, but look at him out there, right? So he has six games played in the playoffs in 2019. One goal, four assists, five points as they lost in the first round to the St. Louis Blues. 2019-2020, 71 games, 22 goals. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight 20-goal seasons, 43 assists, 65 points. So even though his points total is the lowest it's been since 2015, he is still almost a point-a-game player. And in the playoffs against Calgary, he plays all four games. He only gets the one assist. doesn't help when Shifley and Line Air hurt immediately in that series that series was just it was it was not a fair matchup so this season so far he's played six games At the time i'm recording this he's played six games three goals five assists eight points so even though we're only supposed to have a 56 game season he is on pace right now for at least 20 goals i don't know that he gets there but he's on pace for it and the eight points in six games shows you he can produce he is still producing points. And so uh, as he's hit 500 assists now, he's played 937 games, 267 goals, 502 assists, 769 points. 52 games played in the playoffs, 6 goals, 28 assists, 34 points. So his playoff totals are low. Regular season totals are really nice. He should be able to get to 800 points by the time this season's done. And he is one of the more underrated players in the league. I think that if he played in any of the other Canadian markets, he'd get more attention. I think if he played in some of the bigger U.S. markets like New York, Chicago, uh, Detroit, L.A., some of the, well, not L.A. necessarily. I know the California teams, they can get overlooked. But, and you know, an original six franchise, if he had been able to do this in Boston, he, he would have been revered by Boston faithful. Um, not along the same lines as Bergeron, but say a sub-Bergeron level. And he, he would have earned it. His time in Winnipeg has been great. He is, of course, the team captain of the Winnipeg Jets. And it's been great. And the interesting thing, too, is he's got 1,150 hits in his career. So he's not he's not a no-contact player. He is definitely willing to throw a hit if he needs to. And he's got 592 blocked shots in his career as well, which isn't too shabby for a forward. He plays at both ends of the rink. He's a leader. And he's a first-line guy who's getting some of the most ice time right now that he ever had in his career. So I don't know how long he plays, but if you told me, well, he played till he's about 39, that would sound about right to me. I could see another five years. And if he does, he could hit over 1,000 points. And I think that would be remarkable. But hey, if he does reach that total, are people going to talk about it? Maybe. But we'll see. Uh, let me know your thoughts regarding Blake Wheeler in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, again, I thought this would be kind of fun to do today. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon.